All right, here we are. We made it to the final stage of the special event featuring Konix and Yasuko. All or nothing, final stage bearing the same title here. And the final showdown is going to take place at Silverstone. It's going to be at Bridge Grand Prix circuit, so not the current Grand Prix uh, layout, but uh, I just need to make sure that I remember, uh, remind myself to make a left instead of a right <laughs> in that one corner where, you know, the this layout veers away from the current Grand Prix layout. But anyway, final stage, five goals to complete. The first one is going to be an average speed challenge. Target is 136.7 miles per hour or 220 kph. And uh, the final stage, um, no off track. And they're very strict about that. And no damaging, which uh, depending on severity of your contact with other cars, some you can get away with. So perhaps not as strict, um, but certainly want to be careful. Generally, you can get away more if it's like impact from the side versus like like front and back. Right? So, although if you hit still too hard going sideways, you will still uh, get disqualified. Anyway, so here we go. No time to waste now. Uh, so, a little bit of bumping. I, I got away with that one. I guess Trek Marshall's going watching. Well, there are a lot of cones. Come on. They cannot be scrutinized every single one, right? But anyway, so they ask you to come in at least P10. Now, um, with the grid that I got, P10 is gonna be way too slow. Meaning, my average speed is gonna be far below what's required. And as is, I, I gotta keep things moving here. And, uh, alright, so, I need to keep it uh, above 220, so I got a little bit of a buffer, and of course this final, uh, bit is gonna bring my, yeah, average speed down, and then I gotta make sure that I can exit back out into the finish line, flat out, so get that average speed requirement met. All right, and uh, apparently you need to finish somewhere around minute 26. Yeah, fourth finish, fourth place finish. Not ideal when you're trying to bot train, but uh, I mean, I didn't really have much of an option, so it is what it is. And uh, we're gonna have to continue on with the grid that we'll be receiving. Yeah, so we got Valkyrie, Venom F5, and Bolid in front of us. And just so you know, those guys are gonna cause a little bit of headache for some of you guys. So, all right, but anyway, first goal, manageable, not too bad, even without investing any gold in this car. Now, uh, <laughs> heading on, into goal two, hitting that top speed target. I know exactly where it needs to happen. It is the the hangar straight. So it's all about how you exit uh, Beckett's and Chapel curve and allow yourself enough braking distance so you don't fly off you know, at stow. So yeah. I could not do it without gold upgrades. Um, and even, you know, with the one single gold upgrade I, that I put on this car, which I put on the body because that was the cheapest upgrade that deals with the top speed and acceleration, right? Um, 75 and of course the stage 3 racing dollar upgrade that comes with it. So, so there you go, the handling of that Maggots, Beckett's Chapel Curb exiting is the key here. And then once, as soon as you hit the target speed, 
Um, when you're skidding, that there's a bit of a angle that you want to kind of steer your car towards, which can be a bit tricky as well. Because, you know, if you're skidding along the curb as though you're drifting, right? Then you're on track while you're skidding and slowing down your speed. So you, until you regain that speed, right? So that's another part of the tricky thing about this challenge if you're running with minimal upgrades, right? So, yeah, um, took me many, many attempts to get through this one, but eventually, you know, I, you know what I did? I put a lot of effort in without putting any gold upgrades on the car, and, you know, once you know, I was like, I'm not sure if I can actually, or at some point, you <laughs> Assess like how much time, you, how much more time you are willing to invest into this, <laughs> right? So I said like, okay, you know what? Let's just get a gold upgrade and a race car upgrade. Give it a go. See if it works out any better. And uh, I was getting closer. Um, and the other challenge about this is you have to pull that trick off twice, right? So now. Yeah, um, you know, when they give you all these multiple things that you gotta accomplish, like this one, finishing uh, seven, obviously not a big deal. That's an easy part of the challenge. It's all about making, uh, hitting that top speed target twice without going off track. So, yeah, you really need to <laughs> uh, know how to like drift. Yes, that's uh, sort of a things that we don't normally practice in the game unless you're goofing around. And I goof around all the time, but <laughs> anyway, so um, if you guys want, I could make a separate video, just kind of a breakdown of how to tackle that corner. Um, but that is, you know, something that I'll have to make separately, so we'll talk about it. <laughs> anyway, P7 finish. Done. Top speed. Target. Met twice. Done. Stayed on track without going, uh, uh, without damaging. Done. There we go. So, yeah. Bullied Valkyrie Venom F5s. Dominating what's in front of the, uh, the grid. The IDR. Um, Lovely car, it's just, uh, it's electric, so it's got killer grip, but top speed is always its Achilles heels, heel, so, you know, with the, when we're racing cars like Yesco, it's easy to overtake, you know, at circuits like Silverstone. Anyway, so there we go, the, one of the more challenging goals of this entirety. In fact, it's one of the more challenging goals that we've had to go through in quite a few updates, I feel like. Um, so, that was fun. Anyway, moving on to goal three. This is a drafting challenge. And uh, this one I feel like is a bit of a, like a breather. You know, we had a really difficult goal, goal two. And coming up after this one, goal four is gonna be also very difficult. Actually, I think goal four is more difficult than goal two. I know. Like, don't get discouraged though. Um, I had to put more upgrades on before I head into the goal four. That's really what it took me. So I had to kind of buy my way through. But, uh,. Uh, goal three, not too bad. We need to uh, climb up to P3 while drafting. So, um, if I remember correctly, the third and or yeah, third and fourth are kind of next to each other. So, on one of my other accounts, what happened was I think a uh, Valkyrie uh, pitted. F5, so I had to just kind of chase behind Valkyrie, which actually is quite easy because uh, top speed on Yesco is, um, you know, 
far superior to Valkyrie. Valkyrie, of course, is much more balanced, much better balanced. But in at least in this challenge, you know, Valkyrie is pretty easy to tailgate behind. You don't have to like over, you know, try to over drive. Like. So, but anyway, uh, those two, the third and fourth place, are relatively staying close together in this uh, attempt here. So I know I don't have to necessarily try to get behind Valkyrie right away. I got two laps to do it, so... But as you can see, when you are trying to build up uh, your drafting distance behind Valkyrie, it's actually pretty manageable, it's quite easy. Because you don't have to be like riding on the gas the whole time, which allows you to uh, time your braking points a little bit easier and you have a bit more confidence heading into these curves, right? So, yeah, so... Keep building up, and then even when you fall behind just a little bit, exiting the curve, you are able to pitch right back up because of your superior acceleration and speed. Yeah, yes, of course, definitely the speedster here. So, and then make sure you don't go off track, heading into hangar straight as done earlier. That's the spot where you want to make sure you get a nice break, catch up, and then I mean, I've already fulfilled the, the drafting distance challenge. Make sure you don't crash and sneak by. There we go. And then once you're in front, yeah, ship's not going to be able to keep up with you. I know. They do have superior handling around corners, but you know, it also depends on who's driving as well, right? So, yeah, so there you go. Uh, as I said, a bit easier goals, you know, kind of uh, squeezed in between two uh, difficult goals. But anyway, that will do it for uh, goal three. P3 finish, 3 minute 33 seconds and change, pick up a few racing dollars as always, relatively clean race, right, 880 fame points for the effort, alright, so, just two in front of us now, ah, but, the one in the very front, driven by Michael, is Bolide, which is, ah, uh, that's a killer car. So, um, another service that I have to get done here, but the uh, same upgrades as the previous goal for goal three, just the one gold upgrade on the, on the body. Even though, I mean, I don't know if that was even necessary for goal 3, but obviously you cannot get to goal 3 unless you complete goal 2. So, and I needed that gold upgrade for goal 2, so there. <laughs> anyway, we'll return after the service is done. And it is time to tackle the ultimate goal of this special event it's the pen ultimate goal actually but it is by far the most challenging one of all in this event where we gotta win no off track allowed and no severe damage allowed right so in front of us we got uh hennessy f5 and Bugatti will be driven by michael now as you just saw gotta get behind Bolid right away because um, if you uh, fall behind it's gonna be impossible to catch up so and uh, running down hangar straight another uh, kind of a marker that you can use is when you're close enough to your opponent in front the distance marker does not show up in red so if you start seeing the distance marker in red uh, that's an indicator you are a little behind schedule as it were you are you're kind of falling behind so that's one of the 
cues that you can use to see how you're um, handling through the maggots, backets, uh, chapel curves, right? Uh, since that determines your uh, how close you're gonna be behind uh, Michael here. So anyway, I wanted to get behind or get in front of Michael as soon as possible. So in my case, that was, um, you know, after you go under the bridge, the next set of corners, right? Uh, before we come around Luffield to start the lap two, or I guess the official lap one. So I, yeah, wanted to be in front because I, when I was behind, it was very, very difficult, especially if I'm chasing behind Michael in uh, through Luffield, that corner, I just lose him every single time. So I wanted to get in front of him before heading into Luffield, which is what I did. So, and once you're in the front, obviously, um, don't slack off too much because uh, I also had where I kind of was taking it easy since I was in the front, got the P1 secured. I've had Michael rear-end me and fail me that way because remember, you cannot get your car damaged. So when he rear-ends you, it's a fail. So yeah, and then um, yeah, once you're, you know, it's okay to let him kind of pass you by after you've taken over depending on where that takes place, as long as you're, uh, you know, it's before you head into some long straights where you know you have the advantage, right? So, wow, what a challenge. But now it is behind me. I did have to put on extra gold upgrade for this one though, on of all categories, on brakes. Yes, brakes. I feel like, uh, remember, when you purchase gold upgrades or more upgrades in general, your bots do slow down. So I think part of the way it worked out is I sort of bought myself out of this goal. <laughs> Michael, I feel like, have slowed down after I got the brakes upgrade. Not necessarily because brakes upgrade has uh, helped my driving, but uh, more so, you know, <laughs> it's like bribing Michael, I guess, to, hey, come on, man, slow down. <laughs> anyway, Ahmed's running out of battery on his phone and he wants to get a nice picture. So that means our final goal is kind of like a time trial. We got to finish under 2 minutes, 31.2 seconds. Um, So it's like uh, almost like a two full laps, right? So... Um, with the, you know, setup upgrade that I've got going now, now 11 upgrades total, right? So all, uh, stage one upgrades and additional two upgrades on body and additional two upgrades on brakes. So two categories have three upgrades, otherwise everything else has just, uh, you know, uh, stage one or tier one racing dollar upgrade only and uh yeah so this is one of those uh events or, or goals when you're finishing the first lap or when you're starting the first lap so remember because of the rolling start your first lap you had to spend some extra time before the the lap started so um you know you use up just a tiny bit more time on the clock which means uh, when you start the lap two, the lap time that you have versus the, what would you call it, the time remaining clock, if they are relatively close, which in my case, I think it's like 116, let's see, 14, 15, and yeah, 116, and then the um, time remaining, I think was like mid 14, 15 somewhere around there so you know that's close so with the rolling start time 
kind of added or subtracted from the my lap time of the first one. Uh, I think I'm, you know, on on pace. My my pace is not terribly slow, so um, I should be able to bring it in under. I mean, as long as I don't slack off. So this goal, you know, compared to prior goals, not as challenging but you know in itself it's it's you still have to kind of you know push and uh, try to not be too safe you still have to hit your apex eh, okay fine <laughs> a little bit of mistakes seems like it's uh acceptable and yes i did uh this one i did get uh, get it in Let's see, one and zero and just in time. There you go. Two minute 30 and change. Right, so I had like maybe about half a second to spare. Is it cutting too close? That is cutting kind of close, isn't it? But, um, well, we are through, which is the, the important part. Right, so, um, and... <laughs> the last two goals, the videos are actually taken from my original run on my main, one of my pl main playing accounts. So, yes, um, <laughs> notice the, my uh, currency status is quite dramatically different between two accounts. One that I used to play and one that I don't. Anyway, so here's the final upgrade status, PR 90.2. Um, and uh, yeah. So I want to say what, some 75 gold spent on the body, 65 gold on the brakes. So that's what, 140, 140 gold total spent. And then of course we, um, I mean, final stage pays out 25 gold, but you know, combined uh, total payout is 70 gold. So, you know, 70 gold spent to win, uh, I believe the car is worth 1100 if you're to buy it outright. So, yeah, that's a acceptable deal, I would say. But anyway, there it is. Beautiful Koenigsegg Yesco, uh, which is named after the founder Christian's uh, father, I believe. So, it's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, love. I'd assume went into the building of this car. I mean, conic eggs, their hypercars are one of a kind. So anyway, apparently we're not gonna discuss Ahmed's financial uh, situation. I think they should, but uh, they're just gonna leave it as better, better off. Um, Undisclosed, I guess. What's with that? <laughs> oh boy. He could have just said he got hacked or something, but no, we're not gonna go there. Maybe he got sanctioned. Who knows? Anyway, that'll do it for this special event, All or Nothing, featuring Conic Sagiesco. Thanks for tagging along for the ride, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.